Hi guys, welcome to today's video. Today we'll be talking about mirrorless and DSLRs and am I now going to fully commit over to um, mirrorless after using it for over a year now. Um, primarily as a second camera to start with but over the last couple of months I've been using the R6 as a um, more go-to going out on my own with just that camera rather than having a second camera. So let's have a, a chat now and uh, discuss my thoughts so far. We'll also look at a few of the images I've got on the R6 recently and sort of discuss things like that. So let's head on in now. So this is my Canon R6. I've got the battery grip on there to give it a little bit of extra um, battery boost on there and also to give me the vertical capabilities as well of the grip with the button and everything where it needs to be. I've been using this camera now for a good eight months um, and the last three months I've been using it as my main priority camera. Now I've obviously before that been using the 1Ds primarily the 1DX and the 1DX Mark II and this is by far my favourite DSLR I've ever used and probably ever will use until I can warrant maybe getting a Mark III depending on if I continue going mirrorless route or not. So the main reason I've kind of forced myself almost to start using mirrorless primarily is because I want to learn the system more and see what the benefits are over a DSLR and is it worth me getting something like an R5 or an R3 to upgrade into. Um, I managed to get this R6 eight months ago, a very good price and it was obviously an upgrade for me over the R7 which I really didn't think worked as well as I'd hoped it would. Obviously the main thing not having a battery grip so having to make my own um, but I could see some potentials from that camera which could be very useful moving over from a DSLR. So the main things obviously that I'm really enjoying with having an R6 is having that capability of having the eye tracking and be able to press a button on the back of your camera and it will track the eye and you can pretty much guarantee 90% of the time you're going to get that photo in focus with just the eye. There is that small percentage of about 10% of photos that I've seen where it won't track the eye, it will track something completely different. It will track the back of the animal or it will track um, if it's got spots, it will definitely have the spots. That's obviously what they're there for to blend the animal in. Um, but I've had things out in the open where you can blatantly see the eye and you're like, oh, let's track on that. And it just doesn't. So I have to revert to center spot um, one spot focusing, get it in focus and then press the eye tracking and it will find the eye for me. So that does get a little bit frustrating. Obviously as well, RF glass is so expensive for Canon. You have got the adapter and I obviously have a lot of um, fast prime lenses which are faster than the RF equivalents anyway so they're good to have but what you find or using the adapter comparing to using say a native EF camera like the um, 1DX Mark II is you will find that the focusing speed is slower especially with the 500mm I find that a lot I think that's because it's got such a big heavy glass arrangement in there and it being an older lens it's slower communication anyway and then it's having to go through the adapter on top of that as well and that does make a difference so when I'm using the 1DX I will guarantee I'll get more photos quicker than I will with the R6. Now that might just be the R6. I haven't got a R5 or an R3 to test out if those ones work any better um, but I did have the same thing with the R7 where it was a slower, noticeable slower focus than what you can get on a DSLR native on an EF lens. Um, especially found that when I've now got the I've obviously got the 200 to 400 now as well um, and I find this super fast focusing on a DSLR but especially when you have the adapter engaged um, it's definitely noticeably slower on a mirrorless camera but saying that the image quality you do get on these cameras is absolutely incredible um, if I was to commit to going mirrorless I would look at then 
buying some RF glass as well to have so I have native glass to go on the camera and then that would hopefully eradicate that issue. I'm not sure what lenses to go for yet. Problem is with all the primes to replace my primes are stupid money, it's 12, 14, 16, 20,000 pounds compared to where you can buy the older EF lenses for sort of 2,000 upwards now depending on what length you want to go for. So there are things I've definitely got to got to look at in that stage for sure. The other thing that tends to frustrate me, I think it's only the R6 that does this and do, tell me if I'm wrong, I have asked before in the R6 video, but when you have this in mirrorless mode there is no way to put a noise on the camera so you cannot tell you're taking a photo apart from the screen flashing in front of you. And there's been a few times where I've been sort of resting on the shutter button and I've been accidentally taking photos and just not noticed because I've been concentrating on the animal itself. With the R7 you have a noise, with the R5 and the R3 you have a noise. I did ask, and as I said, people were saying you can't. If you do know a way of putting a noise on the mirrorless function of this camera, please let me know because that would make a huge difference for me personally. I don't mind it being a, the quiet sort of electronic noise, but it'd be good to have some form of audible feedback that you're taking a photo for me just so I don't accidentally rest on here because if you rest for a couple of seconds that's 40 photos if you've got a mirrorless mode and that's a lot of space gone and you lose your buffer there's been circumstances where I'd be accidentally pressing it and then realised my buffer's gone and something happens and I've almost missed that thing and that's totally my issue for sure that's not an issue that um, is a common one people probably love that it's this silent but for me and what I do I want to hear that little bit of audio um, back I don't mind if I even have to drop an audio file in somewhere and do that so if you know how to do that let me know that would help me massively um, from there though the big question will I change to full-time mirrorless now I do want to do full-time mirrorless I don't know which camera I would go as a secondary because at the moment I'm using as I said the old trusty 1DX and my mirrorless R6 and if I went full-time mirrorless I'd have to replace this with another mirrorless camera but I'm not sure whether that's going to end up being an R5 or if I can stretch to it an R3 with the R5 Mark II coming out very soon um, hopefully the R5 prices will dip even lower and I can maybe get onto an R5 um, the R1's coming out hopefully next year but that's um, shouldn't affect the price in the R3 second hand wise I don't think. I would love, to, with the ability that this camera has, I would love to go full time mirrorless I think um, and just commit to it. There are so many good things that outweigh the couple of negative things that I've talked about over it. Um, I will miss the noise of the shutter from the 1DX but for wildlife photography you don't want that noise necessarily so just that little bit of audio feedback that I would enjoy is all you really need um, so in, in 2024 I will see myself going full-time uh, mirrorless just need to decide what other camera to um, add to the collection that I've got to then use that now, that doesn't mean for reviews and videos and stuff like that that I won't still pick up a DSLR to do certain things with testing certain lenses um, it would be always good to with the EF glass that I'm using still to use the DSLRs to, for review purposes but for actual me going out and doing my own photos I will be moving full time mirrorless um, so you let me know what your thoughts are are any of you going through the same sort of decision making that I'm going through at the moment or are you sticking 100% DSLR or have you already moved fully over to mirrorless and what was your experiences of going over to mirrorless well, let me know in the comments down below I'm always interested to see what your feedback is and what you want to do and when I decide what camera to add to my collection to go alongside the R6 I will let you know in a video so thank you for watching as always 
I'm going to leave you with some photos that I've taken on the R6 for you to have a look at with various lenses and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks again. Goodbye.